today we've got history and we've got the spanish flu before we do jump into this video i'm gaining super close to youtube partner i need a hundred more subs if you guys don't mind subbing to the channel really help out and it really does mean a lot right let's jump straight to this one man history is often filled with things that aren't very fun a notable oh, yeah. of those is disease Sometimes it will end the reign of an important monarch. Sometimes it will stop a, a lot of bad track. ones as well. Every few centuries, there's a major outbreak, a pandemic. Yeah, and one of yeah, the most just been through one. was the influenza outbreak of 1918, better known as the Spanish flu. So how did this right. pandemic play out? One of the most famous. First of all, it's important to note that there's no definitive answer on where this outbreak actually came from. Some say it started in a British army field hospital in France because all those sick people next to each other was a breeding ground for disease. Right. Some argue that it originated in southern China because the government there had reported a deadly flu there in 1917. Surely the Spanish flu had to start in Spain, <laughs> right? And there are others that say it started in Kansas and American soldiers brought it with them to the Western Front. Uh, what we know for sure is that it definitely didn't start in Spain. Oh. So why is it called the Spanish <laughs> flu then? Great. Well, the reason is that during the First World War, both the Entente and Central Powers implemented strict censorship of the press. And this included some why is it the called the Spanish because authorities were concerned it would demoralize troops. Spain, however, right. was a neutral country and so had no censorship, and its papers were free to discuss the outbreak of flu which had spread. We're sick, yo. Also, given Aye. that the king of Spain himself got very sick, many people only knew about the deadly flu there and had no idea that it was spreading in their own countries, hence the name. Aye, so technically, right, it's called Spanish flu because there was only people that was like talking about it, right? That's so dumb. That is so... That is, so oh, God. To summarise God. the outbreak, the Spanish influenza pandemic infected one in three people globally, and of those, it killed roughly 10%. Most deaths came from the flu causing pneumonia. 10%? Fortunately, though, pneumonia could easily be treated by antibiotics. Unfortunately, antibiotics hadn't been invented yet, and so you simply had to hope for the best. In the end, the pandemic reached all corners of the world and killed about 40 wow. to 50 million people globally in the space of a year. Wait, hold on. And to put this hold in on. Place, killed about 40 to 50 million hold people on. in all corners. Wait, the only. Of the world. Wait, what is this country? What is this country in West Africa? That is the only place that wasn't touched by the well, Spanish flu. That is the only place, bro. What the fuck? About 40 to 50 million people globally in wow. the space of a year. And to put this into perspective, World War I killed about 12 million people over the course of four years. Wow. So the Spanish Holy flu shit. came in three waves, and the first one hit in March to April of 1918. But this was the least deadly of all waves. By May or June, though, the flu had largely disappeared, until it popped back up in France in late October, and it was this second wave which was the big one. To put it into perspective, in six weeks, the illness killed 400,000 people in the United States and 200,000 in Germany. And bro, its that's crazy, isn't were it? mostly young adults. Places like India were the hardest hit, though, with the death toll there alone being over 10 million people in two months. Holy and the third fuck. wave occurred around the beginning of 1919, and whilst also deadly, wasn't as bad as the previous. Over the course of two months, it killed 70,000 people in Britain and slightly more in Germany. After this, though, the flu just simply, well, disappeared, leaving the world to pick up the pieces and return to a sense of normalcy. <laughs> so how did nations try to... I love how it just, it, it just does its fucking damage and then just fucks up. But then again, it don't just fuck off. Like, everyone gets, like, immune to it and, like, you, you, you know, your body fucking get used to the virus and stuff, so... Stop it. Well, we'll look at Italy's attempt oh, fuck, for the man. answer. The first outbreak barely affected the nation, and soldiers on the front were only made mildly unwell. Wow. But it was the second wave, which began in Sassano in September of 1918, that was the devastating one. When soldiers on the front started to die in droves, the government knew that strict measures had to be taken. The problem was that Italy wasn't a hugely developed nation at this point, and so food was severely limited by the war effort, and medical staff and equipment were prioritised for the army. In the end, as millions of people became unwell, combat medics were sent back, and first-year medical students were given control of entire hospitals. Travel between cities was limited, but ultimately this wasn't enough to stop its spread. The Italian government implemented numerous strategies. One, advice was given to people to wash their hands often, to isolate the sick, uh, and to reduce contact with their neighbours, which uh, was difficult given that people had sensible. to keep their rations daily. The government conscripted prisoners of war to clean... Yeah, no, no, that would be difficult, right? Because they wouldn't have access to, like, you know, stuff to wash their hands, especially if they're on rations as well. So, yeah, no, it's just... Bro, living in this kind of time zone and, you know, the flu is hitting you like this. Oh, my God. In the streets, gave police officers face masks and reserved hospitals for only the very sick. It banned public gatherings, closed schools and barred hospital visitors. And it was this aspect, no church, no seeing sick relatives and no attending their funerals, which caused a deep trauma in Italian society. Reminiscent of the Black Death six centuries earlier. Like everywhere else, what the last is wave this? went as quick as the centuries. Like, 
I see this face all the time. Like, is that mass that, like, people wore, like, during this time to, like, protect themselves? Is, is that what this is? Or is, like, or is this just, like, a mass that re resembles Black Death? Like, w w what is that, bro? Like everywhere else, the last wave went as quick as the first one came, and in Italy, the flu killed 600,000 people in six months. Something many people wonder is that given how destructive the Spanish flu was, why isn't it better remembered? And for that, there are yeah. two reasons. The first was that it occurred towards the end of the First World War, and so that event takes precedence. The second was that during this period, pandemics were fairly common, and people were used to cholera, typhoid, plague, and other diseases ravaging their communities. Uh. And combined with people being numb to so many young deaths in the war, much of the world had become, well, pretty used to it. Which yeah, that's actually crazy, isn't it? Like, during that time, bro, just so many people just dying. Like, it, it, it's af, bro. I, I couldn't imagine living in that fucking, you know, in that time zone, early 1900s. Why, the Spanish flu I actually was always seen as a footnote to the First World War, because to many people at the time, it was. I hope you enjoyed this. But really, really, really good video from uh, History Matters. Enjoyed that one. Hopefully you guys did enjoy too. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe. I'll see you all in the next video.